Welcome to part three of our series, Understanding the Scholarly Article. In this segment, we will look at theory and the scholarly article. So far, we've looked at what scholarly or peer-reviewed articles are, the nature of peer review, and how scholarly articles are structured. Now we're going to look at theory or conceptual frameworks. Every field of study at the university will have many theories associated with it, but many of these theories can fall within three broad categories. The first of these is positivism, positivist theories that describe how things are or describe what has already taken place. Such studies don't have an agenda for change, they simply want to describe a phenomenon. The philosophy behind positivism is that truth exists and truth about the world may be discoverable with the right methods. A second type of theory is normative theory, and these theories discuss how things ought to be or tend to be or should be. They help researchers describe what would take place, all things being equal, and proposes desirable outcomes. The philosophy behind normative theories is that certain things or goals or behaviors are predictable or desirable or ethical. In other words, some things are good or better than other things. A third type of theory are critical theories, and these help researchers get at why things are the way they are and locate causes of conditions in society with social and political forces and advocating for change. The philosophy behind these theories is that certain things or patterns need to be explained so that they may be challenged and changed. In order to get a better understanding of these three broad types of theory, let's apply them to one particular topic. We're going to look at bicycle commuting, biking to work. We're going to imagine three hypothetical papers that were all written in and about the same hypothetical city. The first paper that we're going to imagine here is a positivist study, and it asks, what percentage of people in this city cycle to work, and how do these rates correspond to public support for cycling infrastructure projects? The positivist theories that might be used for such a study could include rational choice theory, in which individuals make rational decisions based on a cost-benefit analysis. One individual might bike to work because it is far less expensive than driving. However, another person might choose to drive to work because it's faster and they can accomplish more things, go to more destinations. So that decision is based on a cost-benefit analysis. Public choice theory also looks at how decisions are made in the public realm and how people make rational choices about what things to vote for and to vote against in the political realm. Such a study would use quantitative methods, such as analyzing census data or polling or electoral data, where elections had included ballot box initiatives concerning cycling infrastructure projects. Our second study is a normative study, and it asks, given the right incentives, what percentage of people in this city might choose to bicycle to work rather than drive? The normativeness about the study is that it is assuming that it is a good thing to reduce the number of people driving to work by themselves and to increase the number of people who use a bicycle. That way we reduce air pollution and reduce traffic congestion. Possible normative theories could include normative social influence, which examines how our need for association and community might lead us to change our behaviors towards those that are more widely shared so that we can all work towards a common good. It may also use theories of incentive, the incentive theory of motivation, which explores what rewards or incentives do people need in order to make a behavioral change. This study would likely use qualitative methods such as surveys, interviews, or focus groups 
asking participants about their transportation modal choices and possible incentives that might encourage them to change their mode of transportation to bicycling. A third type of study on bicycle commuting in this city, a critical study, might ask why do women from lower income neighborhoods cycle to work less than their wealthier counterparts? The researchers in this study might have used the first positivist paper, examined the data and seen that women in certain lower income neighborhoods cycle to work less. They want to ask why. Critical theories that would be used for such a study might include feminism, which examines the ways in which inequality between men and women in society is driven by social, economic, political, and ideological forces or specifically theories of Marxist feminism, which looks at how women are affected by modern capitalism. The researchers might also use theories of intersectionality in order to examine how women from particular racial or ethnic groups or experiencing disability may be affected by employment and transportation choices. This study would also use qualitative methods most likely in-depth interviews with the women in question in order for the researchers to understand their lived experience of employment and transportation. What we see here is that positivist, normative, and critical approaches can be applied to the same topic in order to discover different types of things and make distinctly different kinds of arguments. Literature is adopting one of these theoretical approaches can make use of literature from other theoretical approaches. In other words, the normative and the critical study could both make use of that initial positivist study. The critical study might make use of the previously published normative study. So none of these theoretical perspectives is better than the others. All are needed. In summary then, scholarly articles are built on conceptual frameworks or theories Articles in magazines are not. Book reviews in scholarly journals generally are not built on theoretical frameworks. But theories help shape the underlying assumptions of the scholarly paper, the kinds of questions that can be asked, the hypotheses that are tested, the methods used, and the kind of data collected. Knowing this as a student makes it possible for you to compare and contrast theoretical approaches taken in different scholarly articles, or to undertake interdisciplinary or cross-disciplinary research. One of these papers would probably have been published in a sociology journal, another in a journal of economics, another in a journal of feminist studies, or in a journal of uh, environmental sustainability. We hope this series has been useful if you have any questions, please don't hesitate to email Michael Dudley at m.dudley at uwinnipeg.ca.